Hey everybody, welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. Why did your voice change? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it went up a it's like a server voice. Um, yeah, with the straight hose voice. We are, <laughs> we're here with Ron Funches, everybody. <laughs> um, hey, listen, by the way, before I um, we get into it, I always start the podcast by giving people their flowers. I love that. And I want to tell you, man, I you are the best vibe in this business, dude. <laughs> When you, read. when you walk into a room, it's like every, everybody's shoulders drop. Like there's no tension. You are just pure good vibe. And dude, you've never changed or bent. I'm sure you heard people say at some point in time, hey, you can't do this if you want to be. You've never changed who you are. And I mean, obviously it's worked. But like so much respect because you're so different. You are one of one in this town and never changed your vibe, never changed your kindness, never changed how you respect everybody equally. I will tell you one of the things that he would say to me as he was like, Ron talks to me like he talks to everybody else. Dude, that's a, such a huge compliment where you're not differentiating somebody by their job you're treating everybody like people such huge respect for that man I, and just know everybody feels the same way about you but it's so dope to have that like you i your energy in a room is is palpable dude and, and super cool to have you on the show so thank you very much for coming down thank you i really appreciate that yeah, yeah dude absolutely I, i'll yeah on that same note yeah l like Having been your kid, I've been to so many sets. I've been to so many different places. I've been to met so many different people in this business, and still to this day, you are one of the one of the nicest dudes I, I have ever met in this business, in this city, in this country. Like it is hands down, always. Where he's like, every time I would see you, I'd be like, oh yeah, I saw Ron today. We had a great conversation. We talked about sneakers. We just talked about life. Like just a good dude overall, all the way around. And we appreciate you coming to yeah. spend some time with us today. Well, I appreciate that. I think that's just a testament to my the way I was raised, you know, and I, I try not to go away from that. Yeah, and I do believe in treating everyone as, you know, as you want to be treated and until they give you a reason otherwise, yeah. you know, and it does get difficult. I actually really needed to hear that because I have been struggling sometimes recently with just feeling that like, because I do feel like I, I'm such a supportive person and I, um, I love comedy and I want everyone to succeed and i love the different minds and and sometimes i don't feel the same support towards me and or i feel that especially you know recently going through this divorce and stuff and dealing with things and losing some friends and stuff that i thought were, were really in my corner and so um sometimes i do go like what well, man am i a chump like how come i always push like everybody else and push this up and then like it feels like when i need it like and i love my life my life's beautiful but you know how we can all get in those things where yeah, yeah. I, sometimes i'm just like man am i uh you know am i a sap you know so it's really nice to hear that i have i want you to know i've struggled with some of the same stuff the uh, some of my main struggles because i'm with you i love stand up and i love comedians i really do i love this community i uh i used to do a podcast with freddie prince and he sat me down after one show because he saw me he was like upset after some pods and he said you have to figure out the difference between being kind and nice mm -hmm. you can be kind and still have res be able to say no and draw lines you're nice and people in this town are going to take advantage of nice they're going to take 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 but they're never going to give it back to you but one thing i would say about you and i could be wrong <clears throat> you and also there's another guy I know. Uh, do you know Ross Matthews? Mm, yeah, yeah, I do. Both overly kind people, but you've all I, I've always felt a a a certain not a certain but a strength in you guys. You know when you said until you're nice until you don't can't be anymore or until somebody shows you who they are. You always have seemed to me to be a dude who knows where his line is, though. Yeah, is that? Is that when you say, 
because of how you were raised, were you, where were you raised? You, mom and dad, brother, sisters, what'd you have? Um, I was raised mostly in the south side of Chicago. I was born here in California, in Gardena. Um, I left when I was four. My mom and my dad split up and uh, moved to the south side of Chicago with my mom. It's a single mom, um, raised me with her and I lived with my aunt, a female cousin and my sister. So it was just mostly surrounded with a lot of feminine energy south side of Chicago. Um, which was also a lot of gang activity yeah. and stuff in that time. So it was, a, uh, um, you know, and I was just lucky. My mom was very into making sure we went to any free museum days, any, um, free festivals. She took me to go see like Muddy Waters and BB King and all these things that like at the time I was like, Oh, I don't know why are you dragging me to this yeah. like smoky, like bar to listen to this old <laughs> yeah. dude, you know? And <laughs> now I'm just like, Oh, I got so much culture. And it was like, it was, I don't think I would have been a comedian if it wasn't for what she, you know, the way she was, because one of the things she took me to was my first concert, which was um, Moore's Day in the Time, which was tremendous in itself. But they had an opening act, which was this comedian by the name of Shucky Ducky. And he had a catchphrase of Shucky Ducky quack quack yep. for anyone who is familiar. And um, when I saw him, I was just like, in awe of the way that he could control a room and can make people and how happy he made me. And so, um, I think if I had not seen him, I think, I, mean, I think that was the beginning of me being like, Oh, I want to be a comedian. Have you always been very so uh, like a soft spoken dude? Yeah. Oh yeah. When you were growing up, did that cause more problems? Like did that? Cause usually, uh, um, <clears throat> anybody who's, perceived as weaker the bullies are going to start to mm -hmm. circle did you did being soft-spoken end up causing you any problems growing up um i mean i not at the beginning i went to a catholic school for most of my mm -hmm. up, early upbringing and we all knew each other um it wasn't until like my mom kind of was not doing well financially and running low on money and couldn't afford catholic school anymore so in seventh grade um, I had to go to uh, my first like sh Chicago public school, and that was like really like oh fuck like this is yo dude, a crazy how change of pace. Different was that that first day, uniform no Catholic school uniform Catholic school uniform yeah but public school no uniform. no uniform no uniform so right away, just walking through those halls, were you do you remember were you scared were you nervous yeah oh yeah because there were metal detectors there yeah. were all these things I hadn't seen before in my school it's not like my school was the safest right, we had the issues right. too but we didn't have like that and it was a much bigger school than i was used to and also again I, you know the the thing that stressed the most is like not only is it going from like this like you go to mass you go to <laughs> thing to regular school it's also they had all gone to school with each other from first yeah. through seventh grade so they knew immediately they didn't know me yeah you that's know. a target right there yeah and so yeah for a while, uh, yeah oh yeah i was picked on for quite a while for how, how did you hand like it did you handle that did the school handle that did your mom handle that or was it something that just eventually went away or never went away or like oh, it didn't go away no i just <laughs> yeah. it eventually was my dad came back in the picture and was like i'm in oregon and i was like hey can we come live with you because <laughs> yeah how, i don't blame you for that one how old were you when you moved to i was 12 yeah yeah man that that i mean we uh, we've talked about this before but he was bullied pretty heavy in middle school and middle high school. school through high school and and i'm always curious about how you feel like it affected you or if it did moving forward because i like i don't know 
I felt like school bullies were the least of my traumas. I had a, a lot of other stuff going on. Like what other stuff? Yeah. Well, my mom was in an abusive relationship when I was a kid with a gang member named Do Dirty. Um, and then when I moved with my dad, he was in an abusive relationship with a lady he had met in an NA meeting. Um, and so it just kind of went from being, and then I moved from South Side Chicago at 12 to the middle of or- Salem, Oregon, and just being like, okay, I don't know anyone here. And they and they use the n word in a different way. Yeah, it's not not in a familiar tone. There was no blending in in Salem. No, (laughs) wait. So your mom being in it? How your sister is older or younger? Two years younger. Several years older emotionally. Well, of course, because they yeah girls ahead of yeah yeah. And were you? Did you all get along? Yeah, oh yeah, I love my sister. She's the best. And in your family, you know, everybody has a role. Like, what was your role in the family? Were you still the peacekeeper? What do you mean? You were the peacekeeper. Peacekeeper, chill, try to keep everything going. Firstborn, my dad wasn't around for the beginning, so I was trying to be man of the house, try to make things peaceful, not be a burden. Those are my main issues with therapy is feeling like a burden, feeling like, um, you know, that um, it's more stress than I'm worth, you know? And did you, when you were growing up, did you have, because we had certain freedoms that our kids don't have as far as coming in and out of the house, Mm -hmm. leaving. Did you? No, not in Chicago. No, no, no. She needs to know where we were, which was either usually the park or at the house. But even the park wasn't the safest. They would have the, you know, the vice lords, their gangster disciples, and they'd have their meeting in the park library while we're trying to come on thing. and i'm like come on guys that's that's of the of all the places the park library yeah Jeez. that is did you ever bump up against was there ever a spot where someone was like hey you need to come be in this gang with us or anything like oh that? no i was a husky child with a lisp so <laughs> no one <laughs> he's there not like really, yeah <laughs> He, no, 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 no shade to Ron, but I don't think he was there. Yeah. He was their type of person to recruit. <laughs> yeah. To go More of a target. Of yeah. 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 I was a, vi- I was marked victim. <laughs> not- he was used as bait. <laughs> like recruit. Yeah. 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 They were like, this dude is not going to make us look as tough as we want. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. What, what kind of shit? What were you into as a kid? Uh, the same stuff I'm into now. Just uh, video games, sneakers, basketball, um, you know, general sports, but general nerddom, J- Japanese shit, uh, anime, you know, just is in the, all that type of stuff. When I was but a kid. Um, how Love much it. of that was in the South Central, I mean, the South Chicago? Wow, you just made your own little story. South, South Side. South side. <laughs> yeah. Come on, get your shit together. You're making me look bad over here. My God. <laughs> Come on! So when, when Ricky turned red and got shot with the shotgun, how did that affect you? <laughs> Growing up next to Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Oh my god. That is so <laughs> But was there was there a lot of the kids where you were growing up that was into what you were into? Um, you know, not as much as them. I was just back then you used to hide that you were a video game player. You yeah. used to hide that you were in the anime and manga, manga, you know. So um it it kind of changed as as I got older. But I think that's one of the things that me growing up and moving around so much always instilled in me was just like just be me like i don't what was cool in chicago wasn't cool in oregon you know so no. like being like oh i'm supposed to like rodeos and hockey because you know or like i like whatever i like because it all it all changes depending on where you are culturally so i that's a i think a valuable lesson i learned very early so um i never really felt ashamed i mean i wasn't like out promoting that i was going to electronic boutique or whatever <laughs> yeah. but i would wasn't ashamed <laughs> I played Dungeons and Dragons growing up. You're playing played Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons before? I mean, Boulder's Gate, I'm, you know, yeah. yeah. I, I actually but play, He's playing Dungeons and Dragons currently with his nephew. I, not my <laughs> nephew, my grandson. Gra- grandson, my I play, nephew. I played Dungeons and Dragons on Saturdays. We FaceTime, and he's the DM, and he has a lisp. <laughs> 
mm-hmm. and he tells me, he goes, so your character's name is Elfington. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best thing ever. He's such a good dude. I will tell you, being, you know, I, I hear all the stuff about the difference between being a grandfather and mm-hmm. a father. It's all true because there's none of the pressure of raising that child. Mm-hmm. It's just pure. Yeah, that's the fun I get to see. And my mom, I'm happy for her. To, and, and conversations we got to have because she was so much more pressure filled and disciplinarian when when we were younger because, you know, being a single mom and stressed out all the time financially. And now, and I think even in the beginning, she was a little more of a disciplinarian with her grandkids. And then it took her a moment to be like, why am I upset? Like, I don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't have any, I don't have a meeting to get to. It was or, probably a habit for her yeah. to just be like always looking out for the best of, like the best for her kids. Yeah. Wait, I don't think I've ever asked you this. When you were growing up and you did something wrong or not wrong or against the rules, were you nervous? Like, were you nervous about what either your mom or I were going to say to you? Like, did Because you know what I never wanted to do is I never thought parenting through fear was effective. Mm-hmm. I got to remember my dad yelling and me being scared. But when I got scared, I turned off. So whatever message he was trying to deliver wasn't coming close to landing. You never heard it. But did, did I, did, would you ever feel scared? I mean, I don't know if scared is the right word. I mean, no kid likes getting in trouble. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So like, I, I think it was more worried than anything. I was never s- scared of getting in trouble. I think it was more just like, I was bummed out knowing I was going to be in trouble. Right. And there was no way out of it type, type of shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you but, weren't scared to like ever admit or. No, because I, I, I wasn't ever scared of you or mom. I mean, nobody can be scared of mom. She's a right, good, right, right. S- southern angel. Yes. But also h- hard to be scared of you, not in a bad way, but, you know, you yeah. don't take a lot of shit seriously in life. So, well, like, just, there's, you know, there was always that kind of like, I always felt like if you were, sometimes you were getting angry at me, I always felt like I if like I just. the idea of him now yelling at you with this wet t-shirt, <laughs> shirt on, high off his ass. Trying to be serious? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give, give us one now. Like if they if a grand if they're messing with one of these cameras. You saw one of your grandkids messing with these cameras. If he was messing with his camera? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, hey, that's his camera. Yeah. Oh wow. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not my camera. No, <laughs> I, I like I said, I never went angry. I never, and if I yelled, you knew I was serious. I got like a handful of times he's ever raised his voice at me. But mm-hmm. but I, I wonder, like, was there things that at, as like your mom or dad did that you remember saying to yourself, I'm never going to. Oh, yeah. I mean, we used to get spanked and stuff. And so I don't, I'm not a big proponent of spanking in any way. Um, I just, also my parenting has been different. Just, you know, my first son is on the spectrum. And so just general um regular discipline wasn't an option it had to you had to really figure things out because he would he would never take the act he couldn't separate the action from the person and so if you were like hey that's bad he took that as i'm bad i'm a bad person Interesting. i don't th- so you had to really take the time to be like hey what you just did is not acceptable you can't do that action you're a good person but you can't do that so it had to be this real dancing thing and now with my youngest um i almost try to take some of those grandparent lessons that i see from my mom and apply it to my to my youngest because you know he's just two now and so he'll get real terrible twos and real thing and they're like he'll just throw his milk on the ground and be like you pick it up and i'm like no you gotta go (laughs) pick up your milk man and Uh, yeah and so then i'll just be like hey you know this is just this is what we're doing right now i go you can stomp around you can do whatever but i'm gonna sit on this floor and we're not moving on until you pick up your milk i can't imagine like in the 80s especially and before raising a kid on the spectrum you you didn't have this language about what your was happening with your child at that time. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, probably in when I was growing up, they were just called weird mm-hmm. or whatever, whatever you would label them. That is crazy because there were, there weren't those tools or 
people to talk to or websites or anything like that. That's bananas. Dude, I never yeah. thought of that. I mean, even when I was growing up as a kid, like I, I didn't really know about the 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 autism spectrum as I know about it well now because I'm trying to educate myself, mm -hmm. but I didn't really know about it like at least a little bit of education, probably until I was late in high school. Yeah, and I would everywhere. Facts. Everywhere. And so I would, what if I've, you're a comedian and your numbers start going low, you just you say you got autism. Yeah. It's actually, it has helped some people. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of why. Yeah. But so I would go through it and then as I started to learn more about it, I would think back to like growing up and, you know, eight, nine, ten, somewhere around there. And I would think about it because you're right. They were just kind of labeled as like different or weird. And I thought about it a little more and I thought back, it's probably. There are a couple kids that I know for Dude, sure. Dude, at least 10 kids I could probably go back and think of and be like, oh, for sure. Like, but, but it's just not something that oh, we were yeah, educated. No, enough. now that I, you know, I've spent so much time with my son and stuff, I have actually. Uh, we, we all know Rick Glassman, right? Yeah. Like, I was one of the first people. I was like, Ricky, I think you might be on the spectrum. And it was like back when we were on Undateable. And then years later, he was like, I went and got tested. <laughs> 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 how old is your son on the spectrum? He's 21 now. He's 21. Okay. Yeah. How has that, by the way, raising a child on the spectrum, has that changed you? Like how you look at things? And, oh, yeah, of course. Like has yeah. it made you more patient? For sure. Extremely more patient. Accepting, I assume. More accepting, more driven, for sure. Um, just protective. Things also change. You know, it's been really weird because for a long time, my main goal was just to like, um, for lack of a better term, just like wall him up, Rapunzel him, isolate mm -hmm. him, keep him from being hurt. And then now it's like, well, he's like an adult and he has a job. And now he wants, we went to a strip club together. That's we, like, I love it. He wants to be out and active. And now I'm just like, man, I have to like just really instill more independence and keep building his confidence up so that instead of trying to keep him locked in and be like, all right, well, you know, you go out as much as you can. So, right, well, because as a parent, I mean, not that I know, but from what I know from you, what I heard from that is like, as a parent, what you want to do always is you want to fight for your kid. You want to make sure that you're always there to try and make sure that you can help them fix something or you can be there for them at any moment in their life. But as they get older, even for your, your, your boy who's on the spectrum, like, Eventually, you have to kind of let them grow at their own independence pace. Is yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Independence is where you're, com for me anyways, it's where the confidence comes from, you know? Yeah, yeah 100%. That's where the joy comes in. I mean, I love it now that things that I never thought, I mean, up until he was in his early teens, I was still wiping his ass for him. And so to, I couldn't even, It was the, he was the reason why I do Thursday, Friday, Saturday shows because I couldn't be away an extra day yeah. because he couldn't deal with that. And now to be able to leave town and have him like just stay at the home by himself and text me and just the things us go us going to WrestleMania. I was just like seeing him at these big events. I just these things where I'm like, man, I don't want to limit whatever. Uh, you know, I think that's what any parent you're right? just like, man, I don't know what my kid's capable of and watching them succeed. And and one of my favorite things is seeing how kind he he is. He's a very like um, thoughtful man. Like he opens doors for people he introduces himself to people he doesn't have um you know even with his his um, dis disability if you want to call it that um, he doesn't have any type of like lack of confidence he comes in shakes your hand introduces himself and like goes about his day and it was one of the coolest things i mean one of our biggest battles right now is health because he's always just been limited on his diet and unfortunately most of that has been like burgers and fried chicken and so getting him into like rotisserie chicken and drinking protein shakes and explaining to him the value and the importance of being healthy to a guy who truly is free and does not care that's and that is like I told him, I was like, look, man, like you got to be healthy. We're gonna do, we'll do it together. We'll lose some weight together. We'll be healthy boys. We'll be looking good. And I'm giving him this big speech, pumping him up. And he just looks me in the eyes. And he goes, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that sounds like me when he talks to me about yeah, health. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what I do. Also. Yeah. That's exactly what he says. Yeah. I'm a, he'll, he'll do some be Look, I'm a little obsessive with my mm -hmm. health stuff. Use a better word than little. What, what overly obsessive okay i th i feel like look i have a bit of an addictive personality mm -hmm. i'm glad that that personality has latched onto this and, and not, not 
whatever, what, drinking or Coke or anything like that. But he says the same thing. You know, it's like, I mean, do you see this? Because 21 is right around that where you know you have wisdom. They just don't want it. Yeah. Well, I mean, because it's the same for me. Like if I if I had listened to the things that people said that were giving me real advice, then I would have uh, probably done better. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to hear it. You want to no. take your own path. And I'm glad I took my own path. There's things, and I, I wouldn't have been a comedian if I listened to this, some of those same people. You know, how old so, were you when you first got on stage? Uh, I was 23, and so I mean, and also the thing is that at that point, my son was also already two and already diagnosed. So to start at that time some people had some very strong opinions about it. yo what's the diff what's been the difference because if diagnosed at two and you have a two-year-old now mm -hmm. what's been the like what's the <laughs> what's the difference i didn't know kids were supposed to talk that much yeah. i'm like i can't <laughs> man i used to be able to get high around this <laughs> <laughs> This you, kid's gonna snitch if I'm high. <laughs> I know. Chatty, a little more chatty. Oh, much more <laughs> social. And I was happy because I, you know, obviously when it was happening, I was like, oh, this might, if he does end up on the spectrum, cool. I already know how to deal with yeah. that somewhat. And, but if he doesn't, wow, it's gonna be a unique situation for me to experience it, being uh, moral financially. I thought I was gonna be married and have a full thing going on. And so I was like, this is gonna be you know, really cool. And then immediately I was like, man, this guy's real social, chatty. Yeah. And one of the things I had forgotten is that even you know Malcolm Spectrum stuff kept him from being more social and, and made him more so comfortable with adults and not really around kids. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have like 20 kids over here for a sleepover because he's gonna be popular. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to always make sure those happened. Who was who was out of town when those happened? You. I was always like, Beth, Jacob's got like eight kids coming over. She'd be like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm in Des Moines this week. Yeah. So Yeah, I gotta find a new sucker for yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you have the best out. You're like, oh, I'm out of town. Yeah. I can't. We gotta do it at your other friend's yeah. house. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. You know what? I remember um my daughter, it took her a little while to start talking. But then I, when she started talking, I was like, hey, when's she going to shut the fuck up? Like, she never stopped talking. Yeah, it's just the words he says. I mean, he seems pretty events. Um, I mean, I think every parent says that. But also, I'm coming from a thing where my other kid yeah. is. So to see my two-year-old pick up a strawberry and go, like, oh, marvelous, is like, I'm like, what? Marvelous? Two yes. Two-year-old or 80-year-old? That is amazing. Marvelous is an amazing <laughs> word to use. Is that coming from, that's your... It's, I mean, he gets a lot, of, a lot of reading. We read a lot with him. And then he, I, pe I think Peppa Pig might say marvelous a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Peppa Pig. Yeah. 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 You were a Blues Clues guy. Big time. Yeah. Big time Street Blues Clues. Blues Clues. Yep. You and your brother and sister would just sit there. I mean, Blues Clues for hours. Can but I enough. remember, man, you know, wanting to do... And so when your son was two and diagnosed, mm -hmm. were you single? Mm -mm. You were with your... Yeah, I was with my first. So when I when he was two, I was single with my other two kids. And I remember having a similar conversation with my dad about responsibility. And you have... I was newly single with them. And having that same question, people would question... He was like... Oh, are you following your dreams or are you being selfish? Look where everybody lives. You're not making any money. Mm -hmm. Like you, what? And he said, you, you do what you want. We're going to support you. But when does your dream become selfish? And when are you putting yourself in front of their needs? Yeah. Did you have those kind of conversations? Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. All the time. Mostly with my um, first ex's parents. Yeah, they were. And a lot of their conversations were like, someone needs to set him down and tell him how the real world works. And you don't just do something because you want to do it. You got to take care of your kids and stuff. And um, I'm just happy I didn't listen. And it wasn't 
and it is weird because you don't know if they're if you're the one who is delusional and you don't know if you're the one that's i think if you are a good parent yeah you do go like am i making a mistake here am mm -hmm. i putting myself before my kids but i would just go to these shows and have cassettes and yeah. get respect from people and yeah. see the things and the money wasn't coming but but the respect was coming and i was like oh if and it was coming from people who I'd looked up to, mm -hmm. and people who I'd seen on TV, and people who I, when I, before I started comedy, that I just loved already. And so I was like, oh, I'm not just eating, eating shit. I'm yeah. not bad at this. I have a natural ability of it. And I see that now from trying new things. Like when I went to pro wrestling school for a few months, I was like, oh, I don't have a natural ability <laughs> yeah. at yeah. this. Yeah. This. That's, I, 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 you know, for me, the decision ended up being, and I did think it wasn't a question at that point for me of if I thought I was good enough. I knew I was good enough. It was a question of how many more years of this, mm -hmm. right? How many more years of living like this can I put them through? Mm -hmm. But you know, one of the decisions that I came to was I actually um, think it's okay for them to see me struggle. I think it's okay to be in struggle yeah. and to show that we can come out of struggle and just be, struggle doesn't mean we don't love each other and struggle doesn't mean we don't have fun. No, my favorite sitcom when I was growing up was Roseanne, you know, so and that was a lot of that. And that's because I related to it. Me too. It was a family that loved each other. And loved, I mean, that episode to this day, probably my favorite episode is when they just get up and the electricity's out and the whole episode is about how they're going to pay this electricity bill and, and get the lights back on. Because I was like, oh, I never seen a sitcom handle that. And I've been through that multiple times. And so it's just I don't believe. I don't believe in romanticizing struggle. Mm -hmm. I don't believe, I think sometimes when you are in struggle, it becomes this thing that can turn into apathy of when other people, you don't see people around you succeeding or other people around you making plans. You assume that, that success and change is impossible. And I like seeing, one of the things I love about living here is that like seeing someone and then two years later, they're doing something completely different. I agree. They're on a whole nother level of existence. And to see that lets you know it's possible. And that's something that I always prefer as opposed to like, just being like, oh, I can't, you know, just living in a struggle. So I'm glad my, and to this day, my oldest son, like when he's, you know, he'll ask about going on vacation and stuff, and he'll just be like, "Let's go to Oregon, Motel Six. And I'm like, "No, man, no, we don't never need, again. We're not doing Motel Six. Never again, yeah. and we're never doing that again." And I, but I like that he knows that because it really keeps him. He's so grounded. He just likes the things he likes. He wants his video games. He wants his um, toys and stuff. But like, he not entitled he's not a hollywood kid by any means and it's one of my bigger concerns with my youngest kid is to see how he deals oh, with like yeah. coming from a time where like oh oh i go from you know the pool at daddy's house to the pool at mommy's house because he never he never was in the struggle no 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 hopefully not i mean i'm not yeah. looking for it yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by the way can i tell you may you bring up roseanne Maybe my favorite Roseanne moment ever was in the pilot. This is why this, oh, this was great TV and a great, because they did solve things in real life ways. In the pilot, Dan and Roseanne get in an argument and they're going at each other pretty hard. And then one of the kids, Becky, one of the kids gets hurt and gets a pretty bad cut. The argument goes away. They jump into parenting mode. And they fix her up. They comfort her. They make sure she's good. And she dries her tears and she ends up leaving the kitchen. And they look at each other and they don't do some huge speech about, I love you, I love you. Dan just puts his hand on her arm. And they just kind of acknowledge that what was happening before wasn't important. I'm sorry we were arguing. We're a team. It was such a poignant, no speaking moment of the way real people handle things they're, not everybody's eloquent enough to come up with a soliloquy about why I was wrong, mm -hmm. but I'm going to touch your arm and let you know I'm sorry. It was like a, such a beautiful, small moment. That show was 
filled with, man. I don't know if you ever watched a lot of that. No, not really. You watched like Fresh Prince and yeah, uh, Fresh Prince. I think was the one that I watched the most. Probably, it's just of the like, old shows. Yeah, like sitcom wise, like for sure Fresh Prince. It was just like not that I related to it at all because there was nothing for me to relate to. Truthfully. I don't think anyone could relate to it. No. I don't think that was yeah. one of their tenets. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of people like, oh yeah, I remember when I used to live in the inner city of Philadelphia. And now I live with my rich uncle who's a judge and my <laughs> cousin who's a singing star. And I'm also going to bring my DJ friend. <laughs> I, I couldn't relate. <laughs> Not the most relatable premise. <laughs> uh, yeah, my points exactly. But it was definitely definitely the one I enjoyed the most and watched the most for sure. Whew, yeah. Yeah, that's super funny. Man, when you <laughs> when you moved to Oregon, how many other black kids in your school? Uh, in my middle school, I think two. And then in my high school, five or six, probably. And you said like it was overt, like the, the, the way people spoke to you. And it was... I mean, someone painted the N-word on my house at one point, Get on my gate. Jesus. Yeah. Dude, I, how hands. do you like? How do you feel safe going into school the next day? Going like, how does that? I don't know why it didn't faze me. I think. I mean, also you got there's a history of racism, you know. Yeah. So you can become you grow up when your grandparents tell you about things. You're like, it's a sliding scale from someone just you know kids probably spray painting on your gate not that i'm trying to dismiss yeah. it in any manner wasn't a comfortable situation but it's not like it's a was a, a new do you find so i almost when i was in uh, south carolina myrtle beach i was in a meet and greet and i had these dudes come up to me and they were laughing and looking at each other coming up and i was like oh they've got something planned mm -hmm. you know you can kind of pick them oh, out yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah oh these guys are gonna try to be yeah. funny here that's one thing now that I'm like, I've been doing it so long and I'm sorry for interrupting your story, That's but right. if I'm going to, it should be right at the beginning, huh? Um, is that now I'm so attuned to different laughter that I will like, I hate, like I can call it out all the time when like, I'll be thinking if I'm doing a show and some of the crowd doesn't know me and you'll hear that like side laugh and, yeah. I, and I'll stop and I go, hey, I go like, look, I've been doing this for long enough. They're laughing at me. You're talking shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know and yeah. i'll just get at them for it and i just hate now that like but it affects me in my regular day life because i've been on sets so i've been on thing and i'm like oh they're talking shit it's crazy that you say that somebody asked me the other day what's a skill you developed from stand-up doing stand-up that you didn't know you develop and i said i think i can read people really well i mm -hmm. can stand on stage and be like that guy's gonna be a problem mm -hmm. she's gonna and it, it you can really start to read, this is going to be an issue. So that's why sometimes he'll ask me, how come you kicked him out right away? I was like, well, he's going to be a problem. But I'll play with this person because they really want to be here. They just don't know how to do it in public. Yeah. yeah. It's such a crazy thing to be able to, because you're in, we're in front of so many people all of the time. I do like it, though. There have been times where I've been in some place and I've seen somebody not doing stand up like a restaurant or a bar or anywhere. I'll be like, I'm not going to stay here. This is this person right here. This is some energy that is something I don't want to be Like I'm literally on the plane right here. Yeah. Plane right here. You were sitting next to some woman, right? Yeah, I got it moved almost right away. Yeah, right as the plane took off. Right when she sat down, I was like, oh, she's going to talk to me the whole entire flight. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I said, this is not, this is not. Be I had headphones in, so she would say things loud enough. Oh wow! To try to well, get that lets to... you know, yeah. yeah if you dis like, that's just a written contract of society. Headphones. If I have headphones in, you don't talk to me. Yeah. Headphones and a hoodie. Yeah, I'm basically Dude. inside. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm in private. Right Dude, I, I'm in the cones of silence right now. Yeah. There's no. You know what happened recently on a plane when we were on tour? I, I. So here's the thing: we take like red eye flights, and we go to Dallas, mm -hmm. and so we leave at like midnight. We get there at, like five a.m. So I am always asleep on all these planes. 
dude, there was one plane where I, when I was asleep, I have my neck pillow up against the window, hood over my face, not, not this way, this way. So my yeah, face, you, you, you do reverse. Hooding. I cover, I reverse hooding. Oh, yeah, I cover yeah, it up yeah, yeah. because I'm like, yo, I don't want anybody talking to me. And then headphones over the reverse hoodie. So you can clearly see, I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah, the mommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. Yeah. I got tapped on the shoulder. The flight attendant reached nah. over two people and was like, was like shaking me. And I was like, hello? And she goes, you want anything to drink? And I go, does it look like I want anything to drink? Are you out of your mind? But I was like, I was like, if you come back up here and wake me up again, you have to call the air marshal. I'm going to fucking lose my shit. Like, don't. That reverse hoodie where you breathe your own breath, that's something I can't do. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, where you're like, huh, yeah. huh. well, that's it why, gets... that's why towards the window, I have a little peak oh, open. It's just mm. a little bit so there's in. a little ventilation. Plus that's where the air, I, I, I point the, the air. So it bounces off the wall and it comes inside. Did you ever think having an adult child would be this much fun? No, that's again, going to the strip club was the first time I realized that I had been mourning. It, it was one of the that. reasons yeah. that I wanted to have my new son was that like, I was, my son was getting older. I was like, I'm only 40. Like, I don't feel I've been a dad most of my life. And so I'm like, I don't feel like I'm done. Yeah. And I was and last time was so stressful. So I was like, let's try it again. And so, but then now that watching my son get older and watching him, um, the way he treats my mom, the way that he, you know, just even things like cause it was his birthday, and I was, I was like, we'll go anywhere you want for your birthday, you know. And I go, I don't like traveling when I'm not working, but yeah. it's your birthday, and if you want to go anywhere, I'll take you anywhere you want to go. And he was like, I want to go to Omaha, and I'm like, no, no, <laughs> anywhere else. <we> see. <laughs> Why and Omaha? He, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird. Like he'll sometimes just pick places because there's a video game store right, that right. he wants to go to, and I have to like talk him out of it. And but then the other one was New Orleans, and and yes. I was like, oh, twenty first birthday, New Orleans, yeah, yeah hell yeah, let's Bourbon do Street, baby, yeah, got yeah. a nice hotel right on Bourbon Street with a balcony from there. And I was like, what do you want to do? And he's like, I want to eat beignets, and I was like, cool, Cafe and Cafe Dumont. Dumont. yeah, took him there. He went go to a jazz festival, and Love then that. he was just kind of like. You know, when you can read your son, you know, and he, but he's kind of like, eh, I don't know. And I was like, do you want to go to a strip club? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. <laughs> I love that. But then I added it. He's like, I've been waiting for you to ask me. <laughs> he was like, I would have gone, but I didn't want to pay for it. That's why I've been waiting for you to ask me. What? So when he walked in, because he's never been to a strip club, but he also doesn't want to go to a strip club this is never i like this is my thing with it is like no no shame or bagging on yeah. i'm like you girls you get your money guys however you get it get your bag it's, life is expensive and but i and, but the thing is is like i understand the game that is played yeah you just never gonna catch me playing the game yeah no i understand that's it i'm with you i don't I've, I've been to besides what my son i've probably been to three strip clubs max in my life i don't what was it also, like i'm a ch i'm a chatty person yeah so like i ruin i'm a ruiner yeah. if, you're, like, <laughs> if you guys sitting there thinking that you're gonna like uh you know bag that stripper and i sit in there and i know that like, when we went with my son i know the strip strippers like being all tough being like mm -hmm. just trying to come in gangster and i know that she's got a like buttercup from the powerpuff girls tattoo on her leg and i was like oh you're a nerd yeah you're a fucking nerd. and so she's talking this talking about drugs talking that and i was like i go tell me i go what's your favorite anime and then she just did she have one? Oh yeah oh, <laughs> Dude, if you if you have she's a never been asked that in the strip club ever if you have a powerpuff girls tattoo you're a nerd yeah 100 percent you you don't you don't get a you, you're not a random person and you just get a Powerpuff Girls tattoo, especially a Buttercup. Yeah. Nah, Buttercup. What was his experience in the strip club? Like, yeah, I'm what? so curious. Oh, I mean, I took him on Thursday at 8 p.m. because I didn't want it to be yeah. spectacular. You didn't want a yeah. Tuesday night. But you didn't want a Saturday night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was just kind of like strippers on their phone and hanging out and one person dancing to no one and we just sat in a corner and he just kind of but he was having a blast because he's just looking around a lot of stimulation in. yeah there's a lot of things happening yeah a lot of lights there he, was he like, had the best he's so astute and i was like you like it and he's like yeah it's like grand theft auto yeah like, <laughs> why did i have a feeling he was gonna relate it to that that is amazing <laughs> 
That's, I mean, Wait. look. Okay, so sorry, I don't yeah, mean to cut you question. So for me, like growing up, he would always make like niche references, but I grew up like watching old, like early Family Guy and American Dad, and so I'd always be like, oh yeah, and like I'd add to it. And he goes, how the hell do you know about that? Yeah, and I, Family Guy or something. Yeah. Does he? Oh, does he? Since he's a big video game guy, does he make? Like comparisons and references to like everyday life to something that happens oh, yeah. in video games. Something like, that, that happened in a thing? video game. Something happened in a cartoon that I don't know about, like Danny Phantom oh, or Kim Possible. Go, go. yeah, go Danny off. Phantom. Yeah. Danny <laughs> Phantom. That's all I gotta say is, did you do you, do you watch I have a Danny any Phantom T-shirt? Adult <laughs> cartoons with him, like Archer or anything like that. No, we don't really watch a lot of cartoons together. We do. We, we uh, mostly play video games together. Or we'll go video game shopping together. Love we'll go that. to movies together. Uh, we do a lot of that. We do more activities. He prefer. There was a time we used to play games all the time together, and I mean that's actually one of my favorite memories is that like we'd play Halo Two all the time, and I'd carry him through things and yep. you know just kind of clear the level and let him kind of trail. And then I remember one day where I was not paying it that much attention and I look up and he'd already he had murdered everybody and I was like oh he doesn't need me anymore yeah that's love awesome that. yeah and so that's the occasional game that he'll catch me playing and he'll be like I'm a fan of that and we'll play together for the most part he like we like, we like different he likes racing games I don't like racing games yeah me either. Like, with the wheel racing games uh I mean we don't have a wheel but yeah they could be does that's he fun. know you smoke weed yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And is he curious about weed? No, he he's mostly been more curious about alcohol, but we kind of talked about it and he just kind of doesn't want to currently do anything. So how come you, because he, I mean, I guess we've, you found out that I smoked weed around 16, something like that, but you never were much of a drinker either. Now that I think about it, uh, I tried it. There was one time probably when I was 15 where I was at a buddy's house and he was like, oh, my dad's out. There's some Bud Light in the fridge and we tried to play some beer pong. I took a sip of a Bud Light. And by the way, I'll still take, take a sip of a Bud Light to this day and be like, God, this sucks. Like, it's just terrible. Yeah. Never liked it in the first place. I told you I stole a bottle of Belvedere from you once, right? Not until right now. Great. Let's talk about that. <laughs> um, so it was, well, you'll, re you'll remember the exact night. I, because I, I, we used to get bottles because Chelsea used to get. Mm -hmm. cases of Belvedere and she'd be like you'll you'll yeah. remember this exact night I was going into my sophomore year do you remember when I was at that girl's house with a couple friends and it was the night before I was supposed to go to football practice for the first day yes and you came in and dragged me out of that house dude it was the biggest cock block of my entire life that fucking night Jesus you're welcome no I mean I guess yeah but like before I left again because I came I'd come back that's right, because you wanted to stay, and I was like, no, you committed to football. you got to come home and be ready for practice tomorrow. Right, but you had already said yes prior to it, which is why I'd come home and packed a bag and then gone back. Yeah. And then an hour later, he was like, I changed my mind. And I was like, fuck that. In the 20 minutes that I was home that you were in your bedroom, I swapped out a bottle of Belvedere from the bar cart with another one in the garage because you had spares yeah. so i never want to take one from the garage because it would you would notice it i just took one from the cart and put one back on the mm, smart okay ready for this best part this is how i know i'm not a drinker you came pick me up i didn't leave them that bottle i kept the bottle because i was like yeah i'll just leave, keep it for another time it was in my sock drawer until i left notre dame for a year and a half i never touched that bottle I just never did. It stayed in that sock drawer. I never went to it. I never, like, even when we went to parties, I've always just been a weed smoker. Also because it was so much easier to get. Like, it was just in easy. LA, it was in LA, that time, sure. It was so easy to get. You know what he told me, by the way, is that there was a dude, that there was a number you could call in high school. Oh, the taxi dude? Yeah, there, I don't remember what it was called, but it was just, like, random, super shady phone number. They didn't care how old you were. There was just a number that you got. It was word of mouth. It was something taxi. I can't remember. And you would call them. They would send you a menu. You would text them what you wanted, and they would just come drop it off. No questions Foods. asked. For, no, mainly Four Locos, which four are locos. banned in most states now. But crazy that there was just a dude driving around and yeah. doing that for high school students, right? Yeah. Yeah. He told me, he was like, well, there's this guy who drops it off. I'm like, what guy? And he was like, I don't know his name. I'm like, what? Yeah. Oh, by the way, it was, it, was a different, it was a different guy every time. Did you, in high school, were you a drinker, smoker, either one? No, I mean, I tried drinking a little bit, but I never could. Um, 
I'm never been that good at it. I it's just not my thing. And then um smoking it was just something i was always more i mean that's how much of a nerd i was into i would like look up s- statistics on deaths and stuff like that and i'd be like oh all right well weed seemed fine and yeah be, hey. and also playing video games high is way better than playing video games drunk yeah i would think so a hundred percent i yeah. never just liked i mean i drank plenty but man even to this day it's the next day it's not even the night of the drinking you feel great when you're drinking. It's the next day. The next day on weed is just like right now. Yeah, because you're high on weed. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's correct. That's right. Exactly. I'm thinking about doing one of these pods with mushrooms, but I don't know how the interview would I go guess it exactly. really all depends on who the guest is. Yeah, that's true. Like, I feel like you could have done it in this one that's right here. A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Are you? Yeah, but it really all depends pocket. on who the guest is. Where are you going to see? Uh, yeah. Missy Elliott and oh. Busta Rhymes. With Sierra. Oh. I just Sierra. said this to my Where? wife. At Crypto. Oh, that sounds kind of fun, They're actually. playing in Vegas, dude. Mm-hmm. I just said we were driving. We live in Vegas now. I was just driving down into the strip and i looked up i go that's gonna be a great concert that sounds like yeah. so much fun it's also missy's first national tour of her career yeah. what yeah. yeah and i so out of respect i was like i must yeah have how uh, many how, how s- many she's somebody who could do two hours of hits yeah straight hits yeah that's those that's like- again i mean when i get frustrated that's the things i think about I was like wow how talented how much of a game changer how much of a pioneer and amazing missy is but she never felt in in the industry zone where she had a national tour before now that's so crazy, crazy. That that's a crazy wild. stat yeah that is bananas because i bet you because Bus- Busta hits- can't play can Busta play two hours worth of just hits no no right i think he can i think you guys are underestimating because you're not thinking Thinking about his time with the leaders of the new school, you're not thinking about his okay. scenario. Like he could do just playing scenario, a medley of scenario That's true. for a minute. Yeah. Do you know when I saw um, Biz? I saw him in Charlotte. I was playing the Comedy Zone down there. You know, it's what in year that- did you play? What year did you see Biz? Mm, this was years ago. This was pre-COVID. But you know they have the. It's like a little music venue down, mm-hmm. and so I went and saw him, and he played just a friend three times. Yeah. yeah, he opened with it, he closed with it, and in the middle he did a remix. I'm like, yeah. this dude knows. Yeah, why we're here? Lot. Yeah, yeah, we're here to hear a couple well, of hits. Yeah, nobody beats the biz. Did, yeah, that's it. But yeah. he was like, I, I know why you're here. I know why. I. What's the first concert? Do you remember as a kid going to? I told you already. Do you remember? He did already say it on this podcast. Yeah. In this very conversation, I the guess. first yeah. concert you literally went to? probably yeah. thirty minutes ago. Yeah, sitting Told right you. here. Use your and host, this is use, what happens when you do too many drugs. Use your hosting <laughs> skills. Hold on, hold on. He what, said, "Use your hosting <laughs> skills." What part of? Get fucked. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What part? Where? Where were we? Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> talking about his first concert yeah you're talking about the south growing side, up not she, the south central of chicago yeah. but on the south oh, side of yeah. chicago yeah. <laughs> god this man is like making me look bad on this podcast <laughs> yeah oh. there goes that memory by the, way, by the way he said oh like he remembered he, he still, still doesn't know, know. No, no, I, don't, he I, still don't know. I don't remember <laughs> But he, here's my, my favorite thing about him. One, Oof. he knows me inside and out. Yeah. Doesn't let me get away. No. No. With anything. But it is sincerely like. You want to know why I don't like tra- you? It's like. It's traveling with just my buddy. That's what I was asking you about adult. Like what it. Is he your buddy now? Yeah. No, he's my. It's like. It, actually you know again with dealing with the divorce and stuff i think one of my errors originally was just like feeling that i needed someone to help me with my son yeah it's something that i was thinking i was searching for and because i was like oh we I, everything is so difficult on my own and my son needs help and this and that and as i've watched him get older and more independent i'm like he's actually like the best partner the best roommate like you know when people 
uh, he was there from the very beginning. He paid, yeah. you know, him and his disability and getting SSI. He paid the rent when I was younger, couldn't afford to. So like I owe him everything, you know. And so now to see he's just yeah, he's like my buddy. We hang out. We enjoy each other's company. It's a little, you know, we don't socialize as much as youtube because of just communication things mm -hmm. yeah. but like we can you know like we can have conversations and i know everything he's talking about with like one or two words and that's i think is like one of the most beautiful relationships i've ever I, it, it is the most beautiful relationship i've been in it's just that's super cool dude yeah. does he feel comfortable telling you saying whatever mm -hmm. like he to me, like, and I, this is one of the most rewarding things for me with all my kids is that the, the effort and the time and the unconditional love that you put in, it's so rewarding as yeah, they get older. It is. It's like one of the most it's rewarding. Like, and you get it all mostly because you didn't leave. And you could leave at any point, and then they hate you. <laughs> yeah. just, and that's so many people's lives is that their parents left or dad left. And then they're like, oh. And it's just like, I mean, and some of they stayed, it probably would have been worse. Yeah. But like, yep. just being yep. there and being uh, wanting to help and wanting to protect can provide so much and i love it and it provides so much to me as a man like especially you know and like i besides my sons i would probably say stand up is the thing i love the most and it's like broken my heart way more than my sons ever have and i think if my only focus was my career and what i was getting out of comedy it would get it would have got boring fast i would have not like i wouldn't I need my sons to give me a reason to go out and do shows, go out and be inspired. You know, they, um, they, <clears throat> you get tricked here in this town about what's important. And, and it was a constant reminder to me, especially when I was single, they, it was, a, I couldn't worry about the audition coming back from the audition. I couldn't worry about if I got it. I couldn't obsess over it. I couldn't worry about why not me, any of that stuff, because I had other more important things mm -hmm. to worry about. They, I, I feel so lucky early on that they showed me what truly was important. Mm -hmm. It was such a, a fascinating lesson to get as a young, young dude. And I would watch other people hang out at the store until 2 a.m. And I just could never do that. I did my set and I had to go yeah, straight no. home. I know, it's mercenary style. Yeah, that's Come right. Come in, I got a job to do, headed back to the base. That's right. And, and I remember, um, I think it might have been Adam Ray or somebody. Because I there was a whole group of like a standups that I just hadn't met because I was doing Chelsea and my deal with Beth, my wife was, Hey, if I'm writing on a show, I'm not going to do stand up. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be gone during the day and at night. Right. Or if I did do a set, no hangout. And Adam was like, you know, I, I had heard you were aloof because you didn't talk to people. I was like, Oh no, it's not that I didn't talk to people, dude. I just had to go. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't got, sit around got a family. And yeah, you know, and I couldn't sit around and worry about why. You, yeah, you know. but you also had that family responsibility way earlier than a lot of people did. Yeah, like coming thing. up, like in that in that early era of the store, like with you, Joe Diaz, Ralphie May, like that that little circle of you guys and Brody and many more. Like you, none of those dudes had kids. Nobody I knew had kids. Let alone three of them under the age of seven. Yeah. Like you had legit real life shit to deal with. So even if you wanted to sit and chat and hang out with people, you knew where your priorities were. So you had to do what you needed to do. Secret mission. Exactly. Get in and get the job done and get the fuck out. Cause you had legit life shit at home. I remember when I started talking about my kids on stage and Jamie Masada said to me, we did the showcase. You know, we used to wait out on Tuesday to get on stage mm -hmm. and he goes, buddy, 
you were a young guy. Nobody wants to hear about kids. Talk about girls, going out, getting drunk, but stop talking about your kids. I'm like, that's just the worst advice I've ever yeah. heard in my entire yeah. life. Like, what are you talking yeah. about right now? Yeah. <laughs> Known great writer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Based on that advice, it sounds like he had a great career. Uh, well, Jamie um, owns a laugh factor. Yeah. Yeah. He owns yeah. a laugh factor. Yeah. yeah. But you, yeah. That's, yeah. That's not, that was the worst tell advice. people how yeah, to make never, a great yeah. burger, you know. Uh, you, you, is I there, I stick to my zone. Yeah. This is the only thing I know how to do. This is like my therapy. Yeah. Up here. Do that's, you, Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I mean, that's just how I, it's like, I, I can only give you what I have. Like, it, and I only talk about what's important to me. So I've always felt the same. And it is what's nicer now as I find that, like, obviously, like me talking about my kids is less unique as I, like, people look at my grades and I'm like, oh, of course you got yeah. kids. You should have kids. Yeah. But back then it was, I mean, I, I think that's one of the things that we related on and had a kinship on very early was that I think unless, because there is, you know, there's no path to this that I think is easy, but I have a certain amount of respect for people who um, had kids before they had like fame or before they had money in this business because I know, and I can hear it in his voice, I know the level of dedication to maintain both of those things and be active in both of those things. So if there's anything that I can return what you said earlier, that's always something that I respect. I appreciate that. And continue the fact that you, you know, I think the mark of a good man and father is that their kids still want to spend time with them. You know? This is what I was going to go yeah. ahead. I will say also, I because that you think you said about um, when you, if you were writing, you weren't doing comedy, yeah. right? And I remember, I remember my, I think it's probably my sophomore year or maybe my junior year, something like that. You came home the one day from writing and you were like, I, maybe not exact words, but for me, I heard you say, I fucking hate this. Like I, I, I could have, I, I don't, I think you did truthfully. You were like, I, I miss. I don't know how you could it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah personally. Yeah, yeah, I think I did. I think I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. And he yeah. said, he, you said, I miss doing stand up. Yeah. And I said, then go back on the fucking road. Yeah. And you asked me, you went, are you okay with that? Like, I don't want to miss out on some shit. I was like, dude. Go chase your fucking dream. Like, go do what you want to do. Like, Man. you've you've done your time. You did what you need to do. Mom was holding down the fort. Like, like this is the thing. When my I mom do remember came, that, dude. my mom came into my life and to all of our lives. He didn't know, not didn't know, but didn't have curtains in our apartment. Mm. My mom was like, "Hey, we're gonna get you some curtains." Yeah. Like, like she's like, all, "We're gonna let you get this baby get some shade." Yeah. yeah. He's gonna get. He's not <laughs> gonna so wake up man. just cause, just because the sun is up. Don't mean he need to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah and, and so when he told me that he was like you sure you're okay with me going i'm like dude you're chasing a dream mom's gonna hold the fort down we're gonna be fine yeah and the beautiful. biggest thing about it is yeah you were gone a lot we talked about it like uh football game yeah i mean i'm glad you missed the football games we went fucking two and nine so i'm so pretty glad you missed all that um track meets sure some yeah, like, but dude it's still something Right. And and I and listen, I know that you've said not to worry about it, but it's still something that fucks me up that I missed your prom, that I missed so many activities that that are once in a lifetime things. And you've been really gracious, dude, and I've apologized to you and you've told me multiple times not to worry about it. But like there are just certain singular events that I I still struggle with missing because I was still I'm not I'm th so thankful not to be in this spot in my life right now but I felt like I was constantly chasing. Mhm. Mm you know that feeling yeah, here? Yeah. No, it's a balance now. I understand it all. Um I mean I wrote on a couple of things very sporadically just like well i'd say we're just a couple of weeks with on the eric andre show years and years ago and then like the only like probably full level writing job i worked on the kroll show for a while and i learned very quickly that like there's skill sets that are just because they are in comedy they don't necessarily translate for me. I think mm -hmm. one of the things you talk about is that like I have this singular voice. And so when I have to take 
what my voice is and change my rhythm and change my thing just to match the person who I'm supposed to write for, it's difficult for me. And it's difficult for me to go back when I need to go back to writing for me. And so I learned pretty quickly, I'm like, oh, I don't want a writing job. Like I don't, that's just not who I am as a person. I'm but sure it's that, hard to not have that yes. like safety of yeah. the money. And right now, one of my biggest things is that like, my son's my youngest son is two and i have the very same fears of like i'm like i miss a lot with my oldest i miss a lot um with my family i miss my sister's medical school graduation i miss a lot of stuff like that and i'm like determined not to do that with my youngest son so i've kind of like given myself this goal and I, it probably i mean i don't want to say it won't work but i i don't know if it's the healthiest goal where i'm like I got to like basically three years until my son's five and needs to go to school to where I can push, push, push and hopefully get myself to like a theater level comedian. And one thing, if not, like I'm really just trying to host a game show or like be home. Like I don't want to find a job that I hate, mm -hmm. but like I know not even just for my son. I know just getting older, like I'm crankier when I go on the road. I don't have I've been to the same venues many times so there's nothing i want to eat when i go there i'm happy to check in with people but i know me i don't like being bored i don't like doing the same thing over and over so i like try to tell myself to enjoy where i am because i'm hopeful like i don't i wouldn't hate a world where i just hosted a game show and i just did the comedy store and mm -hmm. that was all i did and that would be fine for me because i would definitely it, watch you hosting a game it show it keeps you at home it keeps you creative at the store and then the game show makes you money i i for guys like you to write jokes for other people because i'm sure you i know for a fact because i've seen a bunch of your stand-up you write jokes or, or that nobody you say things in a funny way that other people if you gave them the same exact language yeah. it's not funny yeah so that must make it extraordinarily hard for you to write for other people because you've already got in your cadence. This is how I write jokes. This is how I do all that stuff, right? Yeah. But it also must make it Im impossible for someone to lift any of your jokes. Yeah, it, it, it shows if people lift. And it also, I mean, I've had people, one of the greatest um, compliments I got was on Lights Out I was talking with David after after I did a couple of times and he said the same thing he was like nobody writes like you yeah. he's like I give you a topic and you always find a positive he's like I, he's, he's got to the point he goes, I tell my writers to give me one Ron Funches type joke that goes the other way with it and I was like oh that's a I go I love that's a huge that. compliment. yeah that's a beautiful yeah. compliment because I would say the same thing with Spade I think Spade and Nate Bargazzi mm -hmm. are as close D the, the way they deliver jokes they're as close to like Bob Newhart as mm -hmm. we have you know how they kind of mm -hmm. throw jokes away mm -hmm. it's such a difficult style of comedy but to get a compliment like that from a dude like that who is in himself very unique super cool man yeah do do your does your up, yep. does your oldest son has he been to your shows yeah oh yeah he's been to some shows for sure yeah he likes going on the road with me but mostly just to go to 7-Elevens after the <laughs> show. He likes getting a Slurpee. What's his, he's a Slurpee guy? Oh, he loves a Slurpee. He loves a, 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 some type of corn snack treat. And then a, 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 a gummy as well. So he'll typically go to my... If we get in, if he goes in for a weekend, so summertime, I'll let him travel with me. He'll go to the Thursday show, have fun, eat at the club. And then the rest of the weekend, he stays in the hotel. And just when we get back, he's like, let's go get snacks. Let's go to the movies. I love that, dude. Yeah. Does he, do you tell jokes about him? Oh, yeah. yeah and yeah. does he hear, has he heard him? He's heard a few of them, yeah. And what does he think? Does he have notes? <laughs> does he ever have, does he's he ever never like, really said anything about him? I mean, a lot of time I am not sure if he notices my work, but um, I mean, those are some of my more fun moments with me is that like, Sometimes, I'm, you know, he's older, but I forget. And I'll forget to knock before I open the door. And sometimes he never yells at me about it, but sometimes I can tell he's not the happiest. Come on, man. Come on. My, yeah. my wife walked in on him at a difficult time once. Yeah. Hey, wait, can I? Let me tell my side of the story on that one. <laughs> okay. No, no, let him, let him finish this. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. 
But I forgot what we were talking you were, about. You, you knock on the door and you walk in his oh, room. Oh, and he's watching like episodes of stuff I've been in. And I hope he's watching like an episode of The Great North that I was in. Or I hope watch like some old show, like an uh, older show that I've been in. Um, and then when I we went and saw Inside Out 2 together and he like was reciting the lines back to me. And That's I was just so like, cool, yeah. cool, dude. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool. That one was just cool because that's always been a dream to be in a Pixar movie. Wait, I'm sorry. Are you a voice in Inside Out 2? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I thought you were going to do some research on it. Yeah, I, well, I actually what, did. What hosting goes <laughs> on here? I actually did. I went, I went more like the start of it. I know like Portlandia was the first thing he was on. I knew yeah. you started comedy at 23. I went back a little further. Then I did more recent stuff. He thought that Dan Levy that was coming on the show was the dude from Schitt's Creek. Uh, he gets that a lot. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, well, when you type in Dan Levy, that's who pops up. That is who pops yeah. up, yeah. unfortunately. For Actually, Dan also, Levy. at first, I also thought he was Dan Schneider, but then I realized that that was the I go, Dan Levy's time. coming on the show. He goes, the pedophile? I go, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> And then he walked in, and I was like, I'm like yeah, you, you didn't commit, though. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I've been in this business too long. <laughs> I was like, he walked in, and I was like, Dan Schneider. You're not Dan Schneider. <laughs> I, I, I got it. I got it. I figured, I got there. <laughs> I got there eventually. I'm right? going to say, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not up for sure, no. <laughs> Uh, listen, there's a, there's a couple things that we ask everybody. Mm-hmm. The thing number one, this is I'm be very super curious about this. What is do you? My hope? first concert. Yeah, what's your first concert? <laughs> and do you know who Dan Levy, the pedophile? Is? Uh, um, what's one thing you hope your kids get from you, and what's one thing you hope they don't? Um, I hope that my kids get my. Um, work ethic for me I'm, I think that's one of the things that I pride myself on is my work ethic in just every way and like being professional being on time being a courteous being a positive to any environment that you bring yourself in I think that extends beyond like actually working but like in society just like when like you said when i come in a room i try to be a positive i try to come in and be like we're having fun this is gonna be a great day we're enjoying it whether it's at the uh, on set whether it's at the comedy club i just try to bring that energy because i want work to feel like that um and so i hope that my kids get that from me um i think if there's anything i want them to to not get from me um i think it just was I battle with like you know self esteem and depression issues for when I was younger and still now I think they, um I have sometimes difficulty realizing the value that I bring and realizing um how mu- how hard I work and uh, and the accomplishments that I have received I think just coming from um, a scarcity environment scarcity mindset you sometimes you keep that you know and i don't want to instill that on my kids i want my kids to um it's jokes i've had but like i want them to breathe easy i want them to be able to feel like they can make mistakes i want them to feel that they're valuable no matter how much money they make you know i want them to um not feel that they need to be excellent to be you know to show that they need to be around you know that is <clears throat> That last thing you said, that you're not just basically, you don't have to be excellent to have worth, Mm -hmm. is such a huge thing, you know, especially here in this country with the phone, where all you're seeing is people's best moments, Mm -hmm. you're constantly questioning your achievements, your self-worth, your life, and and so it's interesting because you're raising kids... In a, in a generation where that is like that phone and other people's lives are in front of their faces all the time. Mm-hmm. You're constantly influenced or shown like, like you said, people's best moments. So you're like, well, my life's not right. Not doing that right now. Like, am I doing something wrong? Should I be doing something different? But you always say for parenting, it's like every first time parent is you're figuring out everything on oh, the you fucking don't know what fly. The fuck you're doing. All no, those parenting man, books no. do enough, but every kid's different. Everybody's going to react different. Not every kid reacts to the same kind of discipline. Like but to me, you, the, the parenting book just made me feel bad about myself. Right. 
That's what I'm saying. It's like same with social media. It makes you look down on yourself and have those self-esteem issues of like, Mm -hmm. am I doing the right thing? Like, am I doing what's best for my kid? Maybe I'm not this and that, but yeah. So I find myself digging back into traditional accomplishments and tra- goals is more like cause I think the same thing with social media is reminds you of comedy is that like I, as a fan of comedy and I consider myself a student of comedy, there's certain things that you like look at in the history of things, at least for me. And like it is comparison in a way, but I go like, OK, well, this person did this and this and this and they got a special and this and that. And they're doing this. They get a show and stuff. And then I look at my credits and I go, well, I did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I did this. Yeah. Where, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> Where did it go? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so I yeah. have to, um, one of my favorite things now is that like I go to Pilates twice a week. I go to jujitsu twice a week. And those things like you can't be, you you, you know, you can't get a black belt in jujitsu because you have a better agent. Yeah. Someone else. Yeah. You can't like get it because somebody thinks that your name is popping at that time. It's like it's very traditional, and very skill based, work ethic based, merit based, and those are all the things that I strive in. And so f- those are things like when my I'm just waiting for my youngest to get, I take my oldest and he liked it but said he didn't want to do it again. Yeah. But I'm very much excited to um have my old youngest do jujitsu and get involved in stuff like that. Yeah, we put him in martial arts real young. Yeah, I, from four to nine, I was uh, Taekwondo. I was a black belt in Taekwondo by the age of nine. And then after that, after that. Krav Maga. Yep. Well, I mean, the only reason I left is because they closed down. Or else I would have done Taekwondo, I think. With Billy Blanks. <laughs> oh, fine. Yeah. yeah Billy Blanks, fine. Billy Blanks yeah. was the dude who owned yeah. the spot. And nice. then I did uh, Krav Maga, and I was a black belt in that from 10 to 13. Now, uh, I don't know if you were a black belt. And KMX? Oh, yeah, in the young kids. In yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Don't you dare take my accomplishments. No, I'm from not me. taking your accomplishments. Watch yourself no, I'm over not, there. I'm not. I know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I You're did. Like, I know who bought that. Belt. Yeah, what was your <laughs> first concert? No, I'm kidding. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know what my first concert was. Uh, it was, uh, you bought me tickets to, <laughs> ready for this? It was Kiss FM's Wango Tango. That's fine. In, 20, uh, in 2011. At Universal. That is wrong. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I said it with confidence. <laughs> with such confidence. With such no. confidence. Dude, it, <laughs> no. I know. Oh, pretty far off, My actually. Uh, where was it? It was in Carson City at like the Home oh, Depot. That's not close. Uh, Home Depot Center or no, Arena or whatever it was. But like, that was like one of those, one of those. <laughs> that wasn't close. No. How <laughs> old are you now? Me? Oh, yeah. 55. 55. Wow. I'm excited for 10. 10 more years Let's see. listen yeah. you're old. i'm having honestly I'm, I'm having the time of my life i've mm. never been happier in my entire life ron than right now i i only do things that i think are going to be fun when mm. somebody asks me you want to do this the first thing i think is am i gonna have fun doing that and if the answer is no or i even think about it i'm like i'm gonna pass okay and, and this is fun yeah all the time no, that's Amazing. why I love it. I love seeing the clips of the two of you performing together. It makes me very happy. Do you have any yeah, final w- question for him? I, I would just say, like, yeah, just, and this is kind of a vague question, but what, sure. what, what would be your best parenting advice? Just like, Ooh. we can do, I, I guess, like, I guess we could try, maybe switch it up because you're a first time parent for uh, a kid who, or uh, your son who yeah, was a great. I think it's a great question because. He's can, now experiencing two different things that's what I'm so saying. many years apart mm-hmm. from two completely life perspectives. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. I, I mean, I think that similar to what you said before, that there is no one way to do it. Like, my, both my son's energy is completely different. Like, um, Malcolm was more like a firecracker where he would be like still for a while, then explode and pop off and have these tantrums and stuff like that. And we had to carry him around. And Teddy is more like a wave. Like he like constantly chill, but he's constantly moving. Like he never stops. He's always on the go, always into something. And I just try to embrace whatever my kids are. You know, like I don't want to push one one way, but my other my. And also, I'm just always open, like. My son's got a little pink kitty cat he likes to play with. 
whatever like but, he's got a like a stroller that he pushes around his baby's head but he also like has spider-man dolls and he likes to play with my pro wrestling figures and throw them around and i just like whatever I, like i never am like no that's a boy toy or that's a girl toy whatever he's into i just try to embrace and just um i think with the biggest lesson is just it's the most simple, dumbest, stereotypical thing, but like they're always like it goes so fast. And I remember sitting at my oldest oh, high school graduation, watching him put on his cap and gown, and I was just bawling my eyes mm-hmm. out. And I think it was the closest thing to like a near death experience I ever had because I could see all my choices. I could see mm-hmm. like all these old memories of my son, the bad nights, the um times where i didn't know how things were going to turn out the fights that we had the you know just stress i could see all those replay in my head and i'm watching him put his tassel and and stuff on and just feeling how worth it it all was and knowing that like i mean already you know my son's two and i see these pictures of him sitting laying on my chest and i miss it you know and i'm just like oh all of this goes so fast so i just kind of try to it's against another reason why i'm like i don't want to i'll push 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 these next few years but like i don't want to miss it like it's more more to me now that i have a second opportunity and i know there's not going to be a third because i have a vasectomy so i want to make sure that i enjoy if he has um football i want to go i want to be there i want to see that i know um i I, I can understand i can hear in your voice i know like as much as he forgives it and doesn't seem to care i can hear how much you care and i because i understand that feeling and so i you know beth asked me a couple times why there were milestones in his life graduating elementary school graduating or the last day of baseball or whatever it was she said why are you so emotional and i said because this is the last this is the last kid this is the last time i'm going to experience this it's also a milestone in our lives mm-hmm this is the last youth baseball game. This is the last. And so those were really, those were really heavy moments for me when I knew, oh, this is the last time I'm going to experience this was, was heavy times because it made me realize how much I loved it. Mm-hmm. How much you love it, how much you enjoy it. And, and at the base, base, base level that you're going to die. Yep. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I think, he, I think he wanted to rub it in that you're going to die before both him and I. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys just fist bump, bump me dying first? That's f- <laughs> we'll be at the funeral. <laughs> fist bump me dying first? It's fucked up. You'd rather be high five him instead? No, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> Ron, tell everybody where they can find you. Man. Uh, you can find me. Instagram is Ron Funch. Most of my stuff is just at ronfunches.com. I'm on the road everywhere. I'll be in Portland. I'll be in Seattle. I'll be in St. Louis. I'll be in Indianapolis. I'll be in Dania Point, Florida. I'm going a lot of spots. Yeah. You can watch Loot on Apple TV. That's a show that I'm on with Maya Rudolph. That's Great pretty show. good. I like it. You can watch Inside Out too in theaters it's the biggest movie of the year and i like that that makes me feel good put me in more movies and it happens for you um (laughs) 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 i I love that i want to tell everybody by the way great plug put me in more movies that's right like yeah i want to tell everybody who watches this and i know everybody watches this comedy fan and i'm assuming a fan of mine so i and you know that i am a vibe i'm a good vibe person on stage as well and i like fun and energy if you like my stand-up you're gonna like ron yeah he's so funny and different and unique if you see him on a schedule and i would say we are at a time right now where there are a lot of really good good comics like good comics like good options yes but i will tell you if you like me you're gonna love ron if you see him on a schedule somewhere Trust me, buy the ticket. It's Go a, see him. Yeah, super it's very, funny. Very worth it, dude. I every time I sit down and do these shows with you, I feel so lucky and so grateful that we have this time together before I pass away. Clearly, 
Uh, By the way, you already yeah. said that. You already <laughs> said go that back and rewatch them. Yeah. This morning, God damn it. Yeah, I yeah. just like to remind <laughs> you, know, man, that I do love you and I love, love spending you, time with you. And this is the best time I've ever had in my yeah. life. Ron, thank you. Ron. Comedian Josh Wolf.com for tour dates. What do you want to say? Uh, yeah, what he said for tour dates and tickets. I don't know when this is airing, so come see us wherever we are during this summer. Uh, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Um, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram, and Ron. Thank you so much for coming yeah, on, dude, brother. We really so appreciate much. it. Yes, and as always, do something nice for someone today. Tell somebody you love them. We'll see you next time. Later, everybody. Bye. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're gonna love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.